23 billion dollars in North Carolina is what the agri timber business is all about in in North Carolina. That's that's gross economic benefit, some 180,000 jobs. But that is substantially lower than what it was just 10 years ago. Because what we're seeing is regulation continuing to go in as as we start to see regulation uh, not only in this industry but throughout a number of industries. As we start to regulate it more, what happens is, is those jobs and that product goes where? Well, it goes abroad. One of the things that we've got to understand is the standards that we've started to set out can have a, an adverse effect if they do get too restrictive or quite frankly, if they get implemented in an unfair way. I want to share with you a personal story that happened in my district. We had LEED certified, what, you know, when we started looking at, at building it, uh, we had to make sure that it was green certified. So it was this green building, it was gonna have a LEED certification. And here was a public building paid for by federal tax dollars that we ended up importing forest products from abroad to build a federal building in my district uh, that was just north of Asheville and I, I said well there's something not right here this is not going on why would we be importing forest products when I had a timber industry that was willing to provide it I had people that would be employed if we provided it and yet here we were importing uh, you know timber to build this federal building so I think one of the things that we need to do uh, in Congress is to really try to encourage green building but also look at this certification process that we start to lead it where there is a competition among that so that you you don't have this backlog because right now even though 40 percent of the uh, forest certification globally is in the United States it could actually be higher than that when we go to have the certification of the LEADS program is to allow some additional folks to come in and be part of that certification process. The second is, is I think the, one of the roles of the federal government would be to be the lead that if we don't change that, is to start looking at other certifications that would qualify for green energy uh, or green building. And so when we start to look at that is work with the GSA and other federal agencies to try to bring that in and say, when, when we're looking at building a federal building, we can have this certification, whether it be LEED or perhaps one other or two others. When you look at the forest lands that um, in this country, 10 million family forest uh, owned lands, 10 million. Those are small businesses, small families working hard uh, to be able to, to help grow the economy in their areas and to provide the jobs that need to be provided. These owners are not large corporations, they're families, they're individuals, there's partnerships and other unincorporated groups. They're people who will be hurt by the kind of regulations that are going to be constricting commerce in our timber market. It's, it's unfortunate that some of the regulations that are seeking to promote uh, the green initiatives have the effect of really limiting the amount of American timber and construction projects across the country. A great example is if you talk to some of our architects across the country, the AIA. Um, when we in Arkansas were trying uh, to increase the number of green buildings in our uh, capital in Little Rock, we had three or four of those buildings, the Clinton Library, the Windrock International, Heifer International, all of these which have gotten green building certifications. But some of them they've had to import floors from uh, Asia, um, you know, looking at how we, could, how we could get to that certification meant we had to bypass being able to help create jobs in our own state with a force system that was very, very responsible. You look at what happened after Katrina, an opportunity where we could have used wonderful small businesses across Louisiana in the timber industry uh, to be able to rebuild after Katrina. And they had to actually import um, uh, timber from the West Coast because most of our southern uh, landowners were certified by another program. That doesn't make good sense. And then nobody even calculates what it costs to transport, whether it's in cost or in the environment. Right. Um, moving, you know, guess what? All those bamboo floors that come from Asia, they come on a boat. Lord knows what they burn in those boats. 
you know, and you're talking about the environment, you got to talk sensibly about how we address this issue and how we find everybody to be a winner, and we can. In 2010, I actually wrote um, the USGBC with my concerns. Uh, there's been some issued executive orders um, in states that bypass the lead uh, standards for some of the public buildings and seek to incorporate lord, larger amounts of state timber into some of these state projects. Um, I hate to see it having to go to the state. I'd like to see us as all 50 states coming together and recognizing uh, that we can do good by the environment and do good by small business and do good by our economy um, if we all come together um, and realize uh, how easy that is to do. Our main objective is the same. It is to create jobs and to preserve this great land that we have. Um, and that comes with sensible regulations. The hardwoods that are grown in Georgia or um, uh, you know, some of the products that are made in Florida are going to be just as, if not better, um, responsible to the environment as the, the bamboo floors that are going to be shipped from Asia. One of the things that really needs to be mentioned kind of before I start getting into our study is that the FSC, which is a global standard, uh, the global standard isn't consistent. And so what's ironic is that when we were trying to rebuild after Katrina and we're bringing in wood from who knows where, Russia, we actually could have been bringing in wood that was less environmentally sustainable. So we're costing jobs here in the U.S. to cause environmental damage globally. Allowing these uh, different standards to compete, you're going to get all of those different benefits together. Uh, and who knows what the exact right answer is. That's why we want to kind of let this discovery process work itself yeah. out. Even if, you know, with, with all these things, whether, whether there's a good reason for the FSC having varying standards or not, is to me not as relevant as when you come to product that's produced here, or cons actually, I'm sorry, product that's consumed here. Well, how do we have consumers using the product that is the most environmentally sustainable? Because a lot of, when you're looking for the label, that's really what you were looking for, right? You want a product that you know was produced in a sustainable manner. And so the irony is, uh, if you have a, more, a, string, a standard that's so stringent here in the U.S. that it incents people to end up consuming more environmentally damaging product here in the U.S., that becomes what I, I think becomes the most relevant. What uh, has been an underlying theme here is that if we can let um, uh, competition uh, work as a model uh, rather than a de facto mo uh, monopoly, the, uh, the results to consumers could be significant because that competition can help drive down prices and better standards. What it matters is that consumers are paying um, for, this, for these products uh, 15 to 20 percent more for the wood products. So they're doing it under the understanding that they're doing something beneficial to the economy. So there's a cost involved there and they're willingly doing it. Um, well, the problem, and it's been uh, mentioned by our last speaker here, Wayne, is that the standards vary, they vary greatly across region and across country. And what that means is that there's no guarantee that the products that actually bear the label that you're buying, the logo, is actually benefiting the uh, environment. So by definition, if standards vary from country to country, there's no standard. And that is really the, the, the issue from a consumer standpoint. It's like a bait and switch. You're going out and you're buying something, you're paying more for it, you believe it's helping the environment, but in fact it doesn't. So the irony of all this is that you're, you're, you're encouraging consumers to buy with the eco label to pay more for it, and the reality is they could be bypassing um, a wood that has other cert certification or even uncertified at all, that it comes from a more sustainable uh, forest than some that are coming from, from Russia. If uh, FS uh, C is incentivizing harvesting wood from more risky environments, uh, from locations that have weaker, um, you know, weaker regulations. Then you have greater thre uh, uh, threats of deforestation, pollution. These are countries with higher corruption. I mean, there's more risks involved here, I believe. And then second, there's a lack of consistent standards, mean that consumers are paying more, but they also may not be benefiting the environment at all. And in some cases, the higher costs are pushing them to things that are less eco-friendly to concrete, to metals, to plastics. What I've estimated is the consumer welfare loss for, on wood products that consumers are paying is, is, is approximate, will be approximately $10 billion uh, annually per year, and on paper products about $20 billion. That's consumer welfare loss, sort of a measure of consumer benefits. That's an annual loss if we were to move to a complete monopoly standard here. So 
Uh, consumers were really the big loser here. In terms of other aspects of the economy, um, coming off of one of the prior studies that, that was done here, we estimate the, um, the labor loss could be as high as uh, a, a r roughly uh, 800,000 uh, direct, indirect, and induced jobs lost. And that's what I think we have here is we have a bias that, uh, that punishes um, uh, production in the U.S. and it encourages uh, production overseas where it's more risky. And, and if you go to a country that has uh, existing laws that are much more lenient, it's just much easier to, to achieve uh, that, that um, uh, certification requirement.